In for the Night is a podcast that discusses movies, random topics, and gives you an excuse to just stay in for the night. So we're, I was oh, making sure... Shit. The reason why he's giggling is because I asked him... I'm being annoying. He's being annoying. He's just being obnoxious. But I asked him if he had his papers because we moved. If you notice, the background's different. It's not black anymore um, because we moved from the downstairs to up here, like in the guest room, and we switched everything around because I got tired of carrying my laptop up and down the stairs. And we heard complaints about people not being able to see me, so... Because it blended into the background. <laughs> <laughs> they say they can only see me when I smile or laugh. With so we had to move it. My teeth are not yellow. <laughs> Shut your dirty mouth. Uh, hi, my name is Katie. I am sweaty. Go shower. You go shower. I already did. I did. I already like did. Two too. hours ago. I seven hours ago. <sighs> shower again. You can do it. <laughs> You're gonna break your neck. <laughs> like a bobblehead. Okay, bobblehead. Bobblehead Joe. Bobblehead this bird. Who is you? Who's you? Who's you? Tooth the Pelcomo. Uh, G Dog Arena. Oh, I fucking hate you. You're welcome. Why do you have to be so difficult? Hello. Hello. Testing my mic. It's like really low. I don't know why. And then you speak in yours. Maybe Boo. I'm... Boo. As we wait. Okay, yours is fine. Might as well restart it. No, we're not starting it. We're already a minute and a half in, and it was funny. So, guys, we hope you like our interludes because, yeah, it is what it is. But we have a pretty... Well, how was your week first? No, no, continue. I was like, we have a pretty interesting episode today. So. No, shitty episode. <laughs> I don't even know what the topic is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know what it is. I remember. Like I said it last time and I repeated it to you and you have information in front of you. That's why I remember because I was kind of reading it earlier. We are doing the movie Flight and Flight Creepy Pastas. Hopefully, y'all watched it or have already seen Flight because it is super good. Yeah. And uh, I would definitely watch that movie over and over and over again. But more importantly, how was your week? But more importantly, Flight. Uh, I mean, just one more week until I transfer. It's nothing Yay. too crazy. You get to move back. Which I'm not excited about because I got to pack up my toolbox. I got to grab all my shit. I got to take it across the airport to the hangar, drop it off. Then I got to pick up my toolbox in a different truck, take that across, put it in my truck, and then strap it down and then leave. Not excited. Sorry. <clears throat> Going to be a pain in the D-I-C-K. I'm so glad well, you could sleep. How was your week? It was okay. I'm sleepy. I was really busy this week. Then I got a hair in my mouth. Ew. I took a picture of Ty's eyelashes yesterday because he has like one really long eyelash. It was hilarious. It's probably gone now. It probably fell out. Because <laughs> your eyelashes just randomly fall yeah, out. Just randomly fall out. Like you become bald on your eyelashes. Mine just randomly fall out. Like alopecia. That's where you, like you don't have fa- like facial hair. That would be terrible. Well, I had a friend who had it. I would it. look like a freaking child. Like a baby. Like a baby. I thought you were going to go into the Madonna's song, Like a Virgin. No. But no, like, like a baby. So I listen to Madonna on a regular basis? Fuck if I know. Exactly. I mean, she was good in her prime. I didn't listen to her. <laughs> you didn't have a poster like of her on, in your room? No. It's probably like basketball. or like. I don't have any posters in my room. Space Jam, the bun- the girl bunny. Nope, didn't have that either. I mean, I watch Space Jam, but I'm not like, I don't think I had anything hung up in my room now that I remember. You were a boring kid. I played video games. Boring. And I did sports. So I I, didn't have time to hang shit up in my room. I had kitten posters. Of course you did. Because you are 12. Was. (laughs) (laughs) Still. But yeah. 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 Okay, so let's get into this movie. You didn't talk about your week. I said it was busy. Oh, I didn't hear that. You know you have to like listen to me when I talk, right? No, 100% not. Okay. <laughs> you talk, I do not listen. You just zone out. It's like... It... I talk, you don't listen. So I listen to that's you. That's why we're a match made in heaven. Match made in hell? <laughs> like... Or that. 
That's more like it. That's how we're fitting in things today. Okay, so let's watch uh, watch this movie. Let's watch it. All right, let's go watch it. All right, we got to pause the podcast for a second. Two and a half hours. So we can go. It was an hour. It was two, two hours and eighteen minutes. Two hours and eighteen minutes. That's not two and a half hours. Shut That's up. Twelve. All right. So if you have. Short. If you haven't watched this movie yet, you can watch it. Um, you have to rent it. So we rented it. It was technically on Netflix, but it wouldn't let us play it, which makes me frustrated. But um, you can rent it on Amazon Prime. We rented it on Re- uh, Redbox. Only because Amazon Prime wouldn't work either. Oh, right. Just Netflix, just it didn't have a play option for Netflix. Yeah. So we had to get it from Redbox, but I'm sure there's other things. Like, I think Voodoo, it had it. Voodoo, um, it says where to watch is YouTube, but... I've never watched a movie. I've never watched a movie on YouTube. I have never. no idea how that works. But do you want to read? Oops. Do you want to do your job? Do you want to do your job? I do that and then Holy some. Holy crap, that is long. Yeah, you have to read today. But look at that. Look at those reviews. See, I freaking told you it was a good movie. I told you. So we got Flight came out in 2012. <laughs> Not sure why it's a thriller. It was scary. Drama, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, at 7.3 out of 10 on IMD Bizzle. We got a 77% on Rotten Potatoes. And then a 4 out of 5 on Common Sense, whatever the fuck that is. Um, Synopsisai. Penis pedi. Uh Commercial airline... Pilot Whip Whitaker, Denzel Washington, has a problem with drugs and alcohol. Who Though, doesn't? <laughs> I don't. It so, was ha. a joke. It was a joke. Ha. It was a joke. Ha. Uh, has a problem with drugs and alcohol. Though, as so far, he's managed to complete his flight safely. His luck runs out when a destroyous mechanical. Disastrous. I knew that. I was just testing you. Good job. Disastrous mechanical malfunctions send his plane hurling, hurtling, hurtling uh, towards the ground. Whip pulls off a miraculous crash landing that results in only six lives lost. Shaken to the core, Whip's Whip vows to get sober, but when the crash investigation exposes his addiction, he finds himself in an even worse situation. 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 We got Denzel Washington as Whip. We got Kelly Riley as Nicole. Nadine Villa Villaquez. Villa oh, Cruz. It? No, it's not Cruz. It's Q U E Z. Interesting. As Kath Katarina Marquez. We got my boy John Goodwin as. Hartling Mays, Hart Harling Mays. We got my other boy, Don Cheeto as Hugh Lang. Uh, Melissa Leo, that's an interesting last name, Leo, as Ellen Block. And then we got Bruce Greenwood as Charlie Anderson. Yeah. Mm. Oh, was that another movie? Downfall, The Case Against Boeing? Oh, interesting. <laughs> I was like, as you continue reading was, new articles. I thought that was part <laughs> of the... Um, movie thing, but it wasn't. No. All right. So, um, this movie made me cry. <laughs> it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty. The pretty first like hardcore. thirty minutes is stressful as fuck. Yeah, that's when like all the plain shit happens. Yeah, it was really bad. I mean, that's what happens when you don't do time sensitive changes like you're supposed to. Like when you don't give two shits about the airline. Like, See, but the funny here. thing is, if the plane didn't have that malfunction the plane wouldn't have crashed and he would never have gone to jail no yeah and he would have been fine yeah he was put in a broken plane and but he had a drug and alcohol addiction he just never got caught because he's never had a crash that drug and alcohol addiction helped him help save 96 people because everybody everybody would have died if he didn't do what he did that's crazy and just thinking like, I don't know. he would have just went. 
Because the fucking co-pilot was panicking like a little bitch. Everybody was panicking but him. <laughs> he was like, it's okay, Margaret, come here. And she's like freaking out. And I'm like, I would be freaking out too. And he, she's like, and he had a little nap too before that shit happened. He, so like, he was pasted, like, like shit on his yeah, eyes. He was like nice and refreshed, you know? He was like a, popping up like a daisy. Yeah. And as soon as the shit started happening, he's like, all right, we'll do this, do that. Like usually people get out of taking a nap and they're like, what's going on? He was just like, bam, bam, bam. That's professionalism, except for the fact that he had three little vodka bottles and cocaine and cocaine in his and system. Was still drunk the night before, so he was a point two seven. Seven. That's like wasted. And he was a functioning wasted, functioning alcoholic, right there. Functioning wasted alcoholic. If that you man, have problems with alcohol, please look into AA and or any other rehab, or just be a functioning alcoholic like him, or not. Let's or, not yeah. fly planes and shit. And well, you think every pilot out there is sober? I never want to fly again. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't seen any pilot that I think is like tipsy or drunk, but I like you it, never know. <laughs> like one of the pl- flights I went, I went on like a while back. He was a pilot. He got on the plane, but he wasn't flying the plane. But he was like at the bar drinking, and I'm like, I mean, yeah, I get off of work and I drink. You get off of work, but I was just like, he was getting on the plane and he was talking to the people like as if he was going to fly it. And then he just went and sat he down. He was flying jump seat. Yeah. yeah. Or he was just a ticketed. He was probably going somewhere else or he was done, but he had to just get a fly back, which that got to suck. Like you fly somewhere and you don't, because you, usually you fly somewhere and you take a plane and fly back Return, yeah. and then you're good. But sometimes you fly there and you're like, well, fuck, now I got to get back. So then they got to get on a plane and get back. So that kind of sucks, but I mean, that's their life. That's their life. But they get paid a shit ton of money, though. Uh, yeah, isn't it like four hundred dollars an hour or something? If they're on a triple seven and seven eight seven, yeah, they get like four hundred dollars an hour. So anyone who is looking for a career path and wants to fly, do it. I mean, it's a little pricey to like uh, get your pilot license unless you know someone who has like a little plane that you can fly and get your hours, but. It is definitely worth it in the end, long run, because they just got a new contract too, and their payment, their pay went up like forty two percent. Oh shit! So they're getting so that's paid like six hundred bucks, more. almost six hundred dollars. So I think like a seven seven three seven or Airbus, like the small Airbus, like an A three twenty family, not the three thirty, gets probably like two three something like that hundred. What about a ten ninety seven? was a 1097. I have no fucking idea. You're saying all these numbers and I don't know what it People means. People who know these planes know. <laughs> uh, what about a 333? It's not a plane. <laughs> Actually, no, it might be. No. It'd be funny. I just start randomly. The Airbus is A330. <laughs> so just like, so there's an A330, which is the big Airbus. That's like kind of like a 777 type Airbus. Is it like, like, like the double deckers? No, double deckers are triple or 747. That's no longer like commercial. That's only cargo now. Are you serious? Yeah. They, Why? they took that out of like commission uh, revenue planes. Why? They came out with a triple seven. I like in 2018, I went on a double decker plane. The the triple seven can, I think fit more people. I believe don't quote me on that. Uh, it can fit more people, but the engines, it's only two engines, the seven, four, seven, four engines. So it's the triple seven and seven, eight, seven are more fuel. Wouldn't that be better for flying? What? Having four engines instead of two. No. They want to, and they're loud as fuck because there's four engines. Like the triple seven is more fuel fuel efficient. E- efficient. There we go. And it's not as loud. So, but I'm just saying, if while you're flying, if like one engine went out, you can still fly planes with one engine. What happens if both, like two, go out? Then you still have two. You can still fly. You just have to keep it. You just glide and then you land. Because as long as you keep the lift, the the how you say it the um. Uh, angle of attack so like the air is still going over the wings like it's supposed to to stay without going nose know, down, down yeah. then you could just glide like they did in the movie they were just gliding except they were upside in. down no when he flipped back over they were just gliding that's why he did that so they can stop the the downward, downward draft draft so they can just glide and then land so yeah if you lose one engine that's why they have them two engines they're still they have a redundancy system most planes have like two or three or planes nowadays have two or three redundancy systems. And all all planes have black boxes, right? Yes. What does what does a black box do? That records everything. So it records like 
what status the plane was in before it went down. Oh. It records conversations. It records. So, like, if you if someone deletes them, that is like a federal offense, and you can go to jail. In the movie, like, it was actually kind of cool that Whip who Denzel mentioned to Margaret that he like you, you know the black box to say what you need to say, and she's like, "I love you, Trevor." Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's a good point. Like, yeah, it's the black box. Like, it can survive. Like. That's it's like uh, in isn't it in crash. like a little. It's like in its own encase. It's encasement, like, yeah. yeah. Encasement, and it can survive a lot. But I think it's hilarious that Whip trusted Margaret more than the girl he was fucking. Also, well, this is not a child-friendly movie. Well, at all. I think because for one, Margaret was closer, and also <clears throat> Margaret was sober. He knows that. Uh, oh yeah, I she about was that. not. Yeah. She was at a point one seven when they took her alcohol. Yeah. So she was not less than whip. So fuck yeah, I would rather trust a sober one. Cause you might he might tell what's her name? Trina. Katrina to you know lift up the thing and turn it clockwise. She might turn it counterclockwise and fuck everything up. So I don't really know what that was. I never flown an MD eighty or worked on them, so I don't know what that thing was that she pulled up. I need to look it up, but. Um, it does something. I think important. it dropped something. Like he said, drop the thing. Keep on telling the co-pilot, drop something. Well, he told the co-pilot to drop the fuel, which he did. He already did that, but that was for something else. Can, like, I think what? It was for some trimming or something. That was a question I thought of. Okay, so if you actually drop the fuel, you become lighter. I I, I understand that. I'm not an idiot, but wouldn't the gasoline rain on people below? It it evaporates. Okay. If if you do it at a low, well, they were pretty low, so that might land on people. But usually, I would just be that, like, "What is this raid?" <laughs> they usually do that higher up, so by the time it, it gets, gets to the to, ground, yeah. it's like very minimal. It usually evaporates. But then you were walking around and be like, "Why does this rain smell like gas?" Yeah, because like people that I've never heard people that live over like airports, like they would dump fuel all the time, and I've never heard. That's of people such a waste. Up. It's and jet fuel is very expensive. And was that why like? Plane tickets are stupid. Oh, yeah. Well, that's part of it, but just also plane Greed. tickets are yeah, just more money. Yeah, it, there's there's a lot into it, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot of money in the this field. This stressed me out. It was like Dante's Peak all over again. Why well, Dante's Peak stress you? Out. I remember oh, when because I because like the lava and all the that va- shit. like the volcano and the yeah. shit and we did that episode. Do I remember what episode that was? No, I do Fuck not. No, <laughs> but it's been like a year and a half. <laughs> But, yeah, that was a really stressful movie for me as a kid. Now, this one stressed the fuck out of me because I started crying like 30 minutes in because I was so fucking stressed out. I mean, a plane is like crashing. And it was very realistic on a plane crash. Like, Mm -hmm. it was real realistic. Yeah. So, uh, well, y'all should have seen it, but... If you haven't watched it, just, again, it is not child-friendly because within the first minute, you see a naked chick. And she's naked for quite a long time. Like, she's naked. naked. Walking around the room. I mean, she's good-looking. Bush out. naked. (laughs) Bush out. Bush is out. So, definitely don't let your kids see this movie. And there's a lot of drugs and alcohol abuse, so... Not a kid movie at all. It's definitely rated R or probably even rated mature. I think it's rated mature. Um, this is like is mature different than R? Mature is higher than R. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Usually mature is like there's gonna be naked shit showing. Naked shit. Naked shit. You're gonna naked. see some taters. Taters and bush. Rated R, you'll just see like booty, maybe a glimpse of a nipple or like something. Like a side like, boob. Yeah, side boob. But mature is like full on bush. Ba bam. Beaver first. Fuck yeah, that camel toe <laughs> action. <laughs> But without clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. Uh, so the other comment I wanted to make, I thought it was really funny that uh, right before he went to his, what is it called? Like deposition, I guess. I don't know. Like he's going to the board of people where the they court? were. Sure. I court, mean, yeah. that right wasn't before, a courtroom. It's like he like got at the end. You're talking about? Yeah, he got his hands on a bunch of booze, and he was like freaking out. Oh, and yeah, then he had his hotel. friend come and help him, and he's mm-hmm. like, he did some coke and so yeah, and perked for, up real y'all fast. Haven't seen it? Is John Goodman is like his coke dealer dude, and uh, they've been best friends since they were like fucking teenagers, apparently in the movie, because mm-hmm. uh, they used to. F- I think they f- uh, flew together when uh, uh, Whip was learning how to fly, so they've been together probably teenagers. As friends, so 
yeah, like at the end, he is staying in his hotel. He's been sober for like nine days and he keeps hearing like a door. banging a, yeah. a door and he's like, thought someone, I thought someone was knocking. So apparently someone in the other, like whoever cleaned it left the, how do you call that? The like connecting the, room. The connecting room door open and for a functioning alcoholic, that is not good. And the refrigerator was full of alcohol. Stacks, yeah. Like, I mean, vodka, whiskey, gin. I mean, just you name it was in there. And he probably killed the whole refrigerator. Yeah. Room was a mess. So he, like, hit his head on the toilet when his when the lawyer and his other friend that's trying to help him got there. And, yeah, he gets, he calls, what's this dude's name? Har- Harley? Hardly, Hardling. Harling. Uh, John Goodman, and he starts demanding these I need water. lawyers to get, and they're watching. Do you have a hundred dollars? I have a twenty. Coke. He's like, that'll, that'll do. That'll do. <laughs> He's like watching. You know, the, these lawyers are watching him do drugs in front of him. And the funny thing, the lawyer knew what the fucking uh, the uh, what do you what do you call it when you take the tobacco out of the top of the receipt? Oh, I, I fucking called? don't remember what that. I is. can't remember what he called it, but. The lawyer was like, give me that. <laughs> he fucking did it. I just thought that was hilarious. Dude. And then he, the lawyer paid for all of it. Yeah, the lawyer paid for it. He's like, I got it. <laughs> he's just Fuck. walking around with 500 bucks in his wallet. I mean, that's a lawyer for you. Yeah, he's balling. I mean, he makes probably two, 300000 a year or more. Probably more. Probably more. He, like he, because that he was a high profile lawyer. Yeah, so. and he's for the airline too. So he probably makes bank bank. Be like. Yeah, he probably makes like stacks 500, on deck, five hundred thousand a year, maybe even millions too. So yeah, yeah, and then um, he does about three or four hits, and then he's you know good. He to walks go. out of that hotel room, like looked a like champ. Yeah, <laughs> looking cool as a cucumber. Yeah, in. looking hella cool. But I mean, people say Denzel Wash is not a good looking dude. I think he's a good looking mm-hmm. dude for him being older. Because I mean, this movie is back in two thousand twelve. Like. Now he's even older. Yeah, he's even older now. I mean, that's like still, eleven years ago. Yeah, and he looks pretty old then. Like, and he's. Still but I think that's why, like, they equalizer. made him look like. Yeah, maybe they made him look like that because he is a pilot. He's, he's a pilot, like, and he's like drunk and doing drugs and shit. Yeah, all the time. Um, but yeah, we're not going to spoil the movie. It's a really, really good movie. It is really good. I'm going to give it a ten. Uh, ten out of ten. I would watch that. It is stressful for some people, I guess, especially if you're like very skittish of flying like wifey is i'm not necessarily skittish of flying i just don't want to crash you are skittish of flying because when a plane drops like a centimeter you're like oh my god (laughs) that does not happen (laughs) you're just freaking out you're like babe hold my hand you should just want to hold my hand i want you to hold something You gave it a 10. I'm giving it a 9 because it gave me, made me sad. <laughs> wow. She gives it a 10. Uh, oh. She's oh. not going to say it. Uh, she might not ever watch it again just because it is stressful. I but would it watch is, it. It is I a really watch good movie, though. Yeah, it's like, it really good. But yes, good. again, not for children. Uh, no, no. Unless, Teenagers? No. Maybe. Depending on... If you want to teach them about cocaine and bushes. Yeah, and bushes. <laughs> <laughs> not the plant bush. <laughs> <laughs> the human bush. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Well, that is the first part of our mo- movie. Because we're making, wow. technically, we're making a movie because it's wow. video. How much one have you had? You haven't even had that much. You're already messing up. Mm-hmm. Are, you, are you just going to be judgmental today? Is I'm that always judgmental? Your choice, your path choice. That, that is my path. That is always my path. You're angry towards me. I'm judgmental angry? towards you. You said it weird. Angry. I said angry. 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 You say it? You angry. It. Before you were saying angry. I did not say angry. You just wanted me to say angry. I, we, we're, we're roll, the foot, roll the footage. Roll that beautiful bean footage. All right. Moving on to my topic of choice. We're doing creepypasta. Your face is a creepypasta. Thanks. <laughs> um, for the most part, I got this from uh, Wikipedia. But I, I did cite other places, too. So we'll just go ahead and get started. Are you ready? For some... I'm, all, I'm born ready. You know what Bitch, I'm saying? Bitch, you are a dawdly dawdler. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. Okay, so creepypasta. A creepypasta is a horror-related legend which has been shared around the internet. The term creepypasta has since become a catch-all term for any horror content posted on the internet. My nose is itchy. 
These entries are often brief, user-generated, paranormal stories intended to scare readers. The subject of creepypasta varies widely and can include topics such as ghosts, murder, suicide, zombies, rituals to summon paranormal entities, and haunted television shows and video games. Not vampires? The fuck? Maybe. I quit. (laughs) Creep... Creepypastas range in length from a single paragraph to lengthy multi-part series that can span multiple media types. Ty. Maybe you should write a creepypasta. I live a creepypasta, so. For your, like, thingy that you're trying to do over there. Okay, so, but you already did the term. What do I got to do the term again? Do it again. Just do it. Your fucking face. Uh, The term creepypasta is derived from the internet slang term copypasta. Copy and paste it text. Creepy pasta can be text only, but some of the most famous stories were circulated with a cryptic image or video. Do you know the most popular cryptic image? No. Yes, you do. What is like the, when you hear the term creepy pasta, what do you think? I think pasta that I don't want to eat. There's like something called squid ink pasta and it's black and it looks delicious. That sounds disgusting. It's black. It's cool. I know black is cool. But, but. Slender Man, babe. Slender Man. That's it's... a creepy pasta? Mm-hmm. Oh, I would have never guessed that. Oh, are you serious? Oh, okay. <laughs> I said I Did didn't you finish? Know. Am I supposed to do the A? Just one yeah, read the whole number one with the sub genres. Oh. <clears throat> Did I know that? No, I yeah. didn't. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> We're a little allergy Um, Always allergy Some of them are startling realistic. Startling realistic. Startling Startling realistic. So realistic that the Slender Man, possibly the internet's most infamous monster, and now the big screen's latest horror villain with the upcoming Slender Man movie, tragically inspired two young girls in Wisconsin to attempt to murder... Their friend. I want to do this this topic. Uh, you as could have told me to do that. I. You can I write didn't it hear down. About that. What yeah. is this? What is the topic called? What is it's it? like this. It's called like I think it's called the Slender Man Murders. Uh, murder because they only killed one person. But, but I but. thought, I thought Slender Man supposedly he would convince people to do it. Yeah. So oh. this little girl was obsessed with Slender Man, and her parents were like rockers goth type which is totally fine mm-hmm. um and apparently she was obsessed with slender man and the parents didn't like think anything of it like oh she just likes weird things okay whatever good parents bad follow-through because like the girl like the girl convinced her friend to help her stab like another friend i mean that one friend is very convincing that she convinced a friend to stab another i friend. mean and they're like 13 years old 12 and 13 so they're children i mean it's probably a lot of stories out there like that. We can do ch- child killers. Like, that's a good one. See, a- look at you coming up with all this stuff. You should probably write that down. I w- just put like child kills on your top of your paper real quick, just so you remember it. Child kill. There you go. Earth. Because we'll one of us would forget. So you wrote it. <laughs> just to placate him. Are you done with one? Sure. Okay. So now we are going to go to the history, and guess what? You get to read number two. That was quick. I know, right? <laughs> Jessica Roy, writing for Time, said that creepypastas emerged in the 1990s mm-hmm. when a text of chain emails was reposted on the internet forums and you usenet groups. Uh, Aja Romero. Uh, writing for Daily Dot, stated that Ted the Carver, Carver, Carver was arguably the earliest example of creepy pasta. Okay, so now we're gonna get into Ted the Carver. So I got this off of knowyourmame.com. Knowyourmame.com. Meme. Do I say it wrong? I say meme. Is it meme? That is way wrong. I thought you were talking about something else. I don't know you're being meme. Yeah, it's M E N. M-E-M-E. 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 Yeah. Yeah, meme. Meme. Or say it like that, but it's meme. <laughs> All right. Ted began in, on Angel Fire page, on an Angel Fire page on tw- uh, March 23rd, 2001. To share his caving 
journal online. The post detail events that occurred on December uh, in December 2000 when Ted and his friend Brad, whom we'll refer, refer to as B, began exploring a cave they found close to their home. When they entered the cave, they found a narrow passageway with a small hole that they began to drill through in order to explore, explore further. The blog documents the strange occurrences Ted, Brad, and later their friend Joe encountered, including ghastly screaming, unnatural wind, and strange hieroglyphs that appeared deep in the cave. So this, remember, like the cave itself is blocked off, so they had to drill to get in. So how did those hieroglyphs get in there? That's crazy. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the blog, the blog abruptly ends on May 19th of 2001 with a post detailing a three-week period of time after their last visit to the cave. During this time, each of the cavers reportedly suffered from hallucinations and nightmares, leading to Ted, Joe, and B agreeing to revisit the cave, cave one final time for closure. Uh, prepared to enter the cave with a gun and a knife, Ted started... If you're hallucinating, carrying a yeah, gun and a knife... That's not smart. That's dumb. Please don't carry knives or guns if you're hallucinating. Uh, Ted stated in the final blog post that he will update the website immediately after returns and with answers to anyone's questions. The site has not been updated since. Yeah, because he's not alive anymore, probably. Maybe it's Ted the Caver. I put Carver. Is it Carver on yours? It's. I think it's Caver. It's K A or C A V E R. Okay, so Caver. I just spelled it wrong on mine. So I was right. Rude. I'm sorry. All right. So creepypasta study. So the secret recipe for viral horror story. So I got this on off of vengage.com. So what I found was that all the creepypastas contain con- a combination of sever. <laughs> yes. Did you get all of I that? Did. 100%. All right. So, what I found was that all of the creepy pastas contain some combination of seven horror st- story elements. So, there's seven elements to these seven total elements, a combination of them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be all seven, but it can be this amount or this amount. Okay. So, this is where we're going to back and forth a lot. So, buckle up, Buttercup. Uh, so the first element is it's a first person narrative and I'm going to shoot it to you for number three. Yay. Oh, I got a yawn. Mm. Yawn on your own time. Damn it. I did. I did. Uh, if a story is told as a personal account, there's always the possibility that it could be true. Even if you know that logically it couldn't be. It allows for a certain degree of doubt, however small, that the story is fiction. Okay, so first, like what they're trying to say is that first person narrative makes it sound more true because if it happened to them directly, that's like the, what is it, not secondary source, but primary source Mm -hmm. of information. So it's Mm -hmm. more believable. All right, so the second element we are looking at is murder. Murder? Yep. (laughs) I was just being dramatic. (laughs) Uh, You get to read number four. Five? Okay. 46% of creepypasta stories contain either an act of murder or the direct aftermath of murder. Murder? Murder. Muckduck? Muckduck? No, that's what Dwight says on The Office when he's like, they don't call murder, like, muckduck. It doesn't have a sense of menace. Muckduck. That just sounds funny. Okay. uh, Next element, number three element is a cliffhanger ending so you get to read number five six got it cliffhanger endings can be a cop-out uh but when done well they can keep the mystery alive and leave readers with a chill up their spine i added that part we like it perfect this is especially effective in cases (laughs) where the reader is made to question whether or not the same could happen to them like in the zombie creepy pasta, persuaded. Okay, that one you are going to be reading, and it's fucked up. Uh, next number four element is monsters or supernatural beings. So you get to read number six. Sixty-one percent of creepy pastas have a monster or supernatural being, such. Such ghoulish creatures as the rake, 
the ghost of bedtime and whatever the heck smile dog is. That, that was creepy. Fucking yeah. terrifying. It is real creepy. Uh, and sometimes creepy the scariest monsters aren't the ones that come from somewhere unknown, but the ones that come from similar or familiar places like humans who have become monsters. The Russian sleep ex- experiment is one such example. Example? Example. Um, okay, so number five element is unexplained phenomenon. Number seven. You get to read a lot more now. Good. It's about motherfucker time. Uh, 71% of creepypastas have an unexplained phenomenon. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, some strange occurrences or creature that came out some nowhere but has made an un alterable impression on our psyche 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 e the <laughs> <laughs> disappearance of <laughs> ashley kansas is particularly unsettling example of this made all the more effective by the by its transcriptions mm-hmm. of fox telephone recordings yeah say that right fo you fo f a u x fo Faux. That's stupid. It's French. It's stupid. <gasps> You're stupid. I am very much so. Uh-oh. Yeah, the dogs I'll really take good. a shot, folks. That We are in a room without the dogs, and now the dogs are trying to get into the room. Yeah, and they're scratching Like a the creepy door. pasta. There's probably a smiling dog out there. Well, we have four of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll next. Jump out that window. I would do that one. It's closer to the ground. Yeah, do that one. It's closer to us. See, we just... Poof, be perfect. I go that way, you go this way? Yeah. That's really far for me. I can, like, touch this window. See, that's why you should be going out of that one instead of going out of that one. Well, are you going to go out that one? No. So we're, we're both one. we're both going to drop to our death. It's not going to be to our death. It's rocky terrain, it's babe. It's not that far down. We can land on our feet. We might have, like, What were you going to say? Terrain. Land on your what? I think you are going to say head or butt. I was not going to say neither one of those. Okay. You just want me to say that. So, element number seven, or six, creepy images. So, we are going to number eight. You go to number eight. Did you know that our brains process images faster than words? According to a study by a team of neuroscientists at MIT, our brains can process entire images in little as 13 milliseconds. So, the moment you look at a scary image, it's in your brain. It can be really hard to shake a disturbing image. It's like that... Like my face. Movie Grim Cuddy. Mm-hmm. Remember that one? It's like that one. Mm-hmm. All right. The seventh element is the last element. And it is creepy videos. Tie number nine, por favor. Oh, this is only a small percentage. Only two viral creepypastas were first circulated with a video, a small 6%. One of those stories is the popular gamer creepypasta, Den Ben Drowned, uses a short video clip at the end to give readers an extra chill. That was fun. All right. So the secret recipe for a creepypasta that people share is use no less than two creepypasta ingredients and no more than six creepypasta ingredients. The optimal number of ingredients is four. That makes sense. Okay. So you can middle ground. Yeah, it's a middle ground. Um, Although the most shared story has not a first was not a first person narrative. The other nine stories were. So it's still a safe bet to make your story a first person narrative. All right, so now we're going to the creme de la creme of creepypastas. And the first one is the Russian sleep experiment. Um, This had 64,030 total shares, so that's intense. The next popular one is Squidward's suicide. So you know who Squidward is? Yeah, from SpongeBob. Yeah. Um, That one had 37,298 total shares. The next one is The Rake, which had 13,223 shares. Psychosis, who had 7,428 shares. 
Abandoned by Disney was 7,149 shares. Smile Dog had 7,120 shares. Candle Cove had 4,588 shares. No End Home is 2,939 shares. Bedtime has 2,657 shares. And last on this list is Persuaded, which has 454, 454 shares. Because the Slender Man and Jeff the Killer both appeared first as images, the legend surrounding them has been built up over time and many different writers, video makers, and posters on forums. So they were not considered in this list. Now, what we're going to do is you... What's your next thing? Persuaded. Do you want to read your story first? Sure. Okay. You read your story first and then I'll read mine second. Because I only chose two of the most more popular ones. Um, I'm doing the Russian sleep experiment and he is doing the creep pasta persuaded and that oh. will. So all these are persuaded stories. Yeah. <clears throat> it's part of the same story. I just broke it up. So it's easier to read. Oh, um, it's been two weeks since the whole thing started. It all started with a tanker, uh, accident. It was all over the news. Everyone thought it was just another oil spill. There were plenty of volunteers Plenty of people wanting to help the poor defenseless animals. Plenty of victims. Within hours of the tanker accident, it started happening. The animals had gone crazy. They were scratching and biting to clean up. They were scratching and biting to clean up volunteers. I don't get that. They said that it was an adverse effect to whatever was in that tanker. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, any story that has a tanker accident, you're asking for zombies. Mm Mm-hmm. Do I keep going? Yeah, read the story. Like all of them? Yeah. Oh, so all the way to M. Wow. Yeah. That's a first. Uh, Rescue workers were still trying to get the crew out of the ship. Does it make any... What? Tanker. Oh, it it says ship. They call ships tankers or tanker ships? Uh, Tankers can be ships. It's interesting. They could hear screaming inside, screams to open the door, but when it's all, but that's when it all went to hell, as soon as they cut the door out. There was six minutes of broadcast before it went silent. Six minutes of screaming and agony. The crew, the ship crew attacked the rescue workers like rabid baboons. Breaking bones and tearing flesh, the people on the shore weren't faring any better. Those that had been attacked by the animals were attacking everyone else. It was worse than any war zone report. It was sheer brutality, and yet the broadcast still went on for six minutes. Six minutes and then blank faces. Nobody could explain what was happening. They tried to continue with regular news, the economy, the weather, a cute human interest story, but they couldn't make us unsee what we saw. I tried to continue with my regular existence, but every time I switched on the news or walked by a new stand, it was there. This big mystery. They had some explanations of, of some kind of infection, brain parasites, but it didn't matter. It was an infection we were afraid of. It was them. <laughs> it's a creepy pasta. <laughs> That's freaky. Uh, Four days after the initial report, a state of emergency was raised, and yet we all seen this before. Every zombie movie ever. People didn't know who to trust. People were stockpiling food and weapons. Some tried to flee, but it seems every zombie movie was right. They didn't make it. Three days later, they arrived in my town. Uh, I expected... I expected moans, shuffling corpses, dismemberment, but that's where the movies lied. They ran through the streets screaming. I remember running to my front door as fast as I could, locking, barricading, doing anything to make sure it would stay shut. And then I headed to the window. As I was on the second story, I could see the carnage. They were unstoppable. They were aware. Dun, Uh, dun, dun. A group of them made their way through a building across the street. They jumped straight through plate glass windows. Even the shards slicing them, slicing through them 
made no difference. They just kept coming. My barricade wasn't going to hold. I rushed around my flat, grabbing supplies and jamming them. I just spit. Uh, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, grabbing supplies and jamming them into the most secure room of the flat. I went back for one last look across the street and I wish I hadn't. Well, duh. I would have told you that was a dumb mistake. In my second story window, my face met one of theirs. Dun, dun, dun. That's when you do it. I liked mine. Dun, dun, dun. You still didn't do it. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you. Okay. Then, <laughs> uh, then knew, they knew where I was. I quickly dashed into the room and locked the door. I don't think that's going to help. I don't have any kind of panic room. Well, you're fucked. Or a security. I mean, basement. what typical person has a fucking panic room? I do. Fucking all day, a day. Where? Can't tell you. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, all the dogs know. As they like poke in their little b- numbers and then like they climb into the room and then they're like, bye, mom. Bye, mom. <laughs> like, Fuckers. Um. Wow. Let's see. I, I don't have any kind of panic room or a secure basement. <laughs> so the safest place I could think of was my bathroom. There you go, babe. Is that my bathroom. panic room? Because <laughs> you you don't want to share yours? What is it? Just big enough for you and five animals? It, four, but yeah. And so none of the cats make it in? Fuck no. Okay. Nope. Just yeah. the four dogs. Nellie will just sit out there, sit out there staring at you. She'll probably and start. just like run away anyway, just have them chase her. So she'll be our like decoy cat. No, she'll just sit there like you'll have a window, but it's like bulletproof window, and she's just meowing at you to let her <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the bathroom's on the second floor, so you're perfect. You're safe. Sure. You're good to go. Uh, let's see. You're still a dick for <laughs> not sharing your panic room. <laughs> I'll share it eventually. Uh, when no is way. that like when when like when do I get to be included in the panic room? When you're special enough. Wow. <laughs> My feelings they hurt. <laughs> My feelings they hurt. Uh, no windows. One door with a lock. There you go, babe. I had filled my sink and bathtub full of water so I could stay for a while. Ooh, are they going to drink it? Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I sat in the dark room with the distant screams in my ears. I began to feel like I may have overreacted. It had been two hours and no sign of them. It actually got quieter and I thought they had moved on. Maybe I could leave the room, go get to the kitchen, grab more food to wait it out. A crash came from the front door, the sound of someone running full force into the door and knocking down the barrier behind it. There was a couple more crashes before I knew they were inside. Rapid footsteps moving around the flat. A couple screams. Screams from who? Oh, them? Mm-hmm. Oh, a couple screams and then a bang on the wall beside me. My eyes were open to, the, to their widest. Even in a pitch black darkness of the room, another bang and then another. They knew I was there and they knew I was scared. You baby bat bitch. Uh, This was the zombie nightmare I had been expecting from the start. I had nowhere to run. There was only so much time before they would break in. I sat with my back to the door, hoping my extra weight would make it harder for them to break in. Unless you're 80 pounds, then it's not going to do shit. And then it got worse. Was that part of the story? No. <laughs> <laughs> they're like my extra weight. I mean, if they're 80 pounds, I ain't, ain't shit. Now, if they're like 300, you know, a big boy, then that's something Just, different. just lay down in front. Just, just lay down in front. You're good. But 80 pounds, just... You might as well just... You're a waste of space, eaten. man. Yeah, like, you're just going to get eaten. Just fuck just it. Just be the like the amuse-bouche. You're not even in, like an appetizer. Yeah, yeah. You're, just <laughs> you're just like one bite. Side dish. <laughs> just oh, pass on. Um, let's see. Oh, I hope my extra weight would make it harder for them to get it. And then it got worse. Why don't you open the door? What the fuck? Dun, dun, dun. You fucked up again. I said, what the fuck? All right, that works. 
a voice on the opposite side of the door. No screams or moans, just a quiet, whispery voice. And then the more of them. We've come for you. Damn. You be happier if you open the door. It's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am Venom. <laughs> uh, the Pussy. whispery voices <laughs> became a catacophy. Cacophony. Cacophony. That's a cute word. Of noise <laughs> trying to persuade me, <laughs> to break me, to fool me. Mm, fool. I had heard. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Wait, did we just become an erotic podcast? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> It just sounds like they're going to get handcuffed to a bed or something. <laughs> and ravished. Uh, yeah, and ravished. <laughs> they just want to jump your bones, man. Uh, I had heard that the moaning of zombies would drive people insane, but this was worse. A siren call. I sat in the darkness and hoped and prayed that they'd, be, they'd get bored, but they don't get bored. They don't leave. I see a gnat, sorry. I managed to use the mirror to peek under the door. Oh, I see it now. To peek on the door only to be greeted by horrible, unblinking eyes. So is it just staring down or is it... Uh, uh. Uh, blood, blood, blood smeared faces, screams, and more horrible whispers. Horror? Horrible whispers. That was two days ago. I don't know what to do anymore. Maybe it won't be so bad. Mm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> like the humming. Is like, oh, <laughs> Imagine mm. if I was able to do the smile right now. Like my fucking smile goes up here. Is that so creepy? That's it? Yeah. That's a good creepy. Maybe it won't be so bad. They're do giving have... in. Don't do it. Do you have more? No, that's it. That's all you're done. You're, you're done. done. Okay. I'm cut off. All right. So the last story we are going to do, I mentioned it earlier. I'm doing the Russian sleep experiment. So this is one of my favorite creepypastas. I want to do the blind dog or the smiling dog. I knew I should have did that one for you, but then I didn't want to like fuck you up. So I would have like a picture of it. Like it's really creepy. I want to see this. Do you Not really want to see it? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> the Russian sleep experiment. So the story recounts an experiment set in 1947 at a covert Soviet test facility. I said that well. Thank you. You did. In a military sanctioned scientific experiment, five prisoners that were deemed enemies of the state were kept in a sealed gas chamber with an experimental gas based stimulant compound continually administered to keep the subject awake for 30 consecutive days. Jesus. That's a lot. Like, I'm tired for these people. And 30 I just, days? Like, they would be going apeshit. Right. That's like really bad for you. Like, even if you're like 24 hours no sleep, that's like really bad for you. But if it's days, then. That could, like, fuck you up really bad. Mm -hmm. The prisoners were falsely promised that they would be set free from the prison if they completed the experiment in specified 30 days. The subjects behaved as usual during the initial five days. So the first five days was dandy. (laughs) Talking to each other and whispering to the researchers through the one-way glass, though it was not noted that what... Though it was noted that their discussions gradually became darker in the subject matter. After nine days, one subject began screaming uncontrollably for hours, while the others did not react to his outburst. The man screamed for so long that he tore his vocal cords and was rendered mute as a result. I mean, if you're screaming bloody murder for, like, I I just, um, like, astonished children who scream their heads Mm -hmm. off. They don't, they're not mute. Like, yeah, just scream and scream and scream. (sighs) Okay. When the second one started screaming, the others prevented the researchers from looking inside by pasting torn book pages and their own feces on the porthole windows. That's gross. A few days passed without the researchers being able to look inside, during which the chamber was completely silent. The researchers used the intercom to test if the subjects were still alive and got a short response of a subject expressing compliance. On the 15th day, so they're halfway through this experiment, the researchers decided to turn off the stimulant gas and reopen the chamber. 
bad decisions were made. Smart decision. Uh, the subjects did not want the gas to be turned off, fearing they would fall asleep. Upon looking inside, they discovered that the four surviving subjects had performed lethal and severe mutilation and disembowelment on themselves. They cut themselves up. Wow. That takes like a lot of willpower balls uh during the past few days including tearing off sections of skin and muscles removing multiple abdominal internal organs so they're pulling out their own fucking organs uh practicing self-cannibalism oh tasty treats get that long pig okay (laughs) (laughs) as well as Cannibalism of the second subject and allowing 10 centimeters or four inches of blood and water to accumulate on the floor by jamming paper and pieces of flesh. They, they tore from the second subject into several drains who was found dead on the floor as soon as the chamber was opened. So they stopped up the drains with pieces of flesh and paper Mm -hmm. and then blood and water. Puddled. Puddled up by four centimeters? Four inches. It? Four inches? Jeez Louise, that is a lot. I mean, how big is this chamber? I'm assuming it's not that big. I don't think it's that big. I don't know. I didn't see a fucking floor plan. Like, Well, maybe you should have. Okay, it's about this size. And Slacker. then there's, there's like two bunk beds and a single bed. All right, perfect. Okay, now I know. It... Thank you. Did that, 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 did that help you? That, that did. Okay. Yeah, 100%. Great, 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 great. Where are the drains at, by the way? There's going to be two on the floor over here. Okay, okay. I think I'm, I'm good now, I think. Okay. (laughs) Okay, so the subjects violently refused to leave the chamber and begged the scientists to continue administering the stimulant, murdering one soldier and severely injuring another that attempted to remove them. After eventually being removed from the chamber, all subjects were shown to exhibit extreme strength, unprecedented re- resistance to anesthetics and sedatives, the ability to re- remain alive despite lethal injuries, and a desperate desire to stay awake and be given the stimulant. It was also found that if any one of the subjects fell asleep, they, they would, would die. die. Mm-hmm. After being somewhat treated for their severe injuries, the surviving three subjects were prepared to return to the gas chamber with the stimulant by the orders of the military officials. Though against the will of the researchers, with EEG monitors showing short, recurring moments of brain death. So their brains are dying over and over again. Jeez, just over and over Mm -hmm. again? Before the chamber was sealed, one of the subjects fell asleep and died. And the only subject that could speak screamed to be immediately sealed into the chamber. The military commander ordered for three other researchers to be closed inside the chamber alongside the two remaining subjects. Why? Mm. Uh, one researcher immediately drew his gun and killed the commander. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Anybody hold it? Hold it, hold yeah, it, hold it sideways. sideways. It's gotta be gangsta yeah, gotta the be Soviet. Gangsta. Dasa motherfucker. <laughs> 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 uh, they killed the commander and the mute subject by shooting both of them in the head, causing the other person to flee the room. With one... Oh, sorry. With only one surviving subject, the terrified researcher explained that he would not allow himself to be locked in a room with monsters that could no longer be called people. He desperately asked what the subject was, to which the subject smiled and identified himself and the other fallen subjects as an inherent evil inside the human mind that is kept in check by the act of sleeping. After a brief pa- brief hmm. pause, the researcher shot the prisoner in the heart and with his dying breath on the floor, the subject muttered his final words, so nearly free. Oh, the the other part of us was only yeah. free? I like I had to shorten it because it was really long and I didn't want to read like five million pages on here. But they're like after they removed the subjects, there's part of it where they were doing surgery on this guy and he could, he wouldn't go to sleep. Like he, they injected him with anesthetics and all that shit. And he was awake on the table laughing as they were trying to stitch him together. Jeez. Louise. It's like scary. I think you read this to me. I think yeah, I did. read this. Yeah. Like, so like we were on a trip or something. We were on a car ride and you were driving yeah. and I like told you about it and I was like, I'll just read it to you. It was really fun. Yeah, you read it too because I remember all of that. Oh, look at you remembering stuff. I do. I do. 
Well, that's creepy pasta for you, folks. There's a bunch more stories out there. You can definitely look them up. Um, definitely, we're going to look at the smiling dog. Uh, Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, just because the, I think the picture itself is kind of crazy and spooky and amazing. But um, today's a shorter episode, which is great for y'all. Or not great if you like the longer episodes. Yeah. But Sad day in hell. Great. <laughs> um, great. <laughs> uh, that's that's where we're at. Okay, so next episode, I get the movie, you get the topic. Do you remember what you picked? I do, brood face. You never remember shit. Um, so my movie is called The Platform, and it is... Oh, yeah, I forgot you said you were going to do that. And it's a good one. I've seen it before, but I've been wanting to rewatch it. Um, it's on Netflix, so if you have Netflix, definitely watch it. Um, there is a net flying around, and I can see them every so often, and it's bothering me. Ah, oh, damn it. Everybody clap your hands. Clap your hands, get that net. Clap your hands, get that net. I'm not a beatboxer. <laughs> <laughs> that was obvious. <laughs> I am not Biz Marquee. Uh, but yes, that is my movie. Watch that movie. It's pretty good. Um, your topic? Peggy the Doll. All right. So we're going to get keep the creepiness going. Uh, we are going to do Peggy the Doll, which is a haunted object. So I'm very excited about this. Um, so that's our episode. Definitely. We take emails all through the like months that we've been doing every this. Every day, all every, day. Every day, all day. So definitely write into us. For sure, share any con- confessions you have or ask for advice. Um, or if you just have any funny stories that you would like to share with us. We'd Your own it. creepy pasta story. Oh, yeah. If you have a creepy pasta that you like, we would read that. Maybe that's Fuck our yeah. next. Maybe that could be our next episode. We could add a couple more creepy pastas because that mm-hmm. would be badass. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely send those in. Um, you can reach us two ways. You can either email us directly at infothenight69 at gmail.com or you can go to our website, infothenightpodcast.com, click content, and then email us there. Mm-hmm. But what else can you find on our website, Lur? Sexy merch and sexy Patreon. Patreon. All right. So if you want to see our gorgeous faces as we record and make funny faces, because I have been told I have a lot of expressions and it's not a lie. I don't make any expressions. I just have a face. With a mouth on it and two eyes and facial hair. No nose. Just no like, nose. Nope. So I'm you're like noseless. Voldemort. Yes. But black. But yeah, the darker version. So you're... <laughs> <laughs> and the darker version the of darker Voldemort. darker version. Black. Black Voldemort. <laughs> black is night. Because you know... Like, there's a show or something that's like, oh, Black Tommy. I'm like, why do you call him Black Tommy? Well, he's black. He's black, yeah. <laughs> So, Black Voldemort, Voldemort, Voldecourt. But your thug, instead of having a wand, you have, like, your wand, which is, like, a desert eagle. Desert eagle, 50 cow, <laughs> black and gold. What is mm, this? Fuck like, yeah. Abracadabra, motherfucker. And just vanish. <laughs> They should be, we should make that. That'd be dope. <laughs> pretty sure we'd get sued. I'm pretty sure we wouldn't. Because <laughs> it's like the TV show Black Jesus, and he's a black dude walking around acting. See, as Jesus. he's still going on. Uh, okay, that's funny. Um, so <laughs> Patreon definitely join. Uh, we do have our upload our videos, and if you want early access, that is how you're gonna get it. So definitely join Patreon because I'm lazy and I don't like coming back to shit and having to upload it later. So I just upload it as soon as we finish recording. So mm-hmm. you can have early access. Um, other mm-hmm. than that, I think that's it. I think so as well. Uh, Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right. So we hope we gave you a reason to stay in for the night. And peeps, until next time, peace motherfucking out.